Hi guys, it's Judith from the Intuitive Body Foodie Network, dedicating this video to Julie, Julie Carr. Uh, she had asked me if I would create a video on how to restore cast iron, uh, which what I will do in this video. In a future video, I'll show you how to do daily care for your cast iron. But for now, let me show you my collection and I'll show you what I have that needs restoring. I got a really good find. And then I'll take you through the process. So as you can see, I have a fairly nice collection. Uh, this kettle and this kettle is what I'm going to show you. I've just finished them. Um, I'm going to show you how to restore those as well as one of these griddles. So just to start with, um, the methods that I use in this video um, are only one of many ways that you can um, restore cast iron. And you'll notice with the kettles, because whenever you have something that is deep and you can't really get into it, like there's a lot of different parts to that, um, I would highly recommend, and I did, and you'll see that, using either pure white distilled vinegar, kombucha vinegar, or raw apple cider vinegar, uh, either straight or a 50-50 dilution and let it soak. And in fact, you can do that with all of these cast iron, even flatter ones. Say you have a, uh, like a frying pan uh, that's not very deep. Um, it saves a lot of elbow power. The vinegar will do the work for you. I just bought these offline. As you can see inside, it's pretty bad, pretty nasty. So I'm cleaning this up and then I'm going to season it and put it in my oven uh, to bake that seasoning on. I also have a couple of cast iron griddles. So this is one that I bought used. It looks like I need to clean this. I haven't used it in a long time, but it looks like it, it um, got water spots. It has a little bit of rust on it. This is in really good condition. I already cleaned this one up and pre-seasoned it, but this is the one my father-in-law gave me, and as you can see, it needs a lot of tender, loving care. Now, I am sure there are many ways that you can get the um, rust off. Just as an FYI, this is how I do it. I'm not saying this is the right way. This is just a way that works for me. Uh, with the limited tools that I have and the abilities that I have. So all I'm going to do is just rinse this off. And I'm going to scrub away and I'll show you what this looks like in a bit. So whoever had this last, um, I don't know if this actually belonged to my father-in-law or if he got it from someone else and gave it to us, which I'm assuming that's what happened. They didn't clean it at all. Um, and obviously it just wasn't well cared for. So there's a lot of gook on there. This is the only time when I will add soap. I never, ever, ever clean my cast iron with soap, just plain water. And I will show you uh, how to prevent your cast iron from getting rust, so how to properly care for it. Uh, perhaps I'll do that in a separate video, but for just know that this is the only time when I've got something this caked on that I will use soap. That's some of the gook I'm getting off. It's oh, nasty. And that's just, that's fat and grease from being used. Someone cooked on it, but they never cleaned it. So as you can see, there's still a bit of rust on there, but for the most part, uh, all the gook is off. So what I have here is a, a jar of pork fat that I rendered, and I use it specifically for this reason. So I have a lintless, this is a bar mop cloth, uh, and this is what I use to do all my seasoning. And you want to be able to get into all the little grooves. You're not going to apply a heavy coat. You want it to be a very thin coat. 
you're going to notice that this probably will bring up some of the rust. That's okay because this is just the first coat. And now I'll get a brush to clean that up. This is where old toothbrushes sterilized in vinegar and or bleach comes in handy. It helps you get into all those little grooves. So again, just a really thin coat. I'm going to wipe off all this excess, but for right now, I'm going to apply it fairly thick because I want to get every little crevice. So now that I have it mostly coated, I just want to take another relatively clean cloth. So I have two that I work with. And I just want to wipe away and get right into all those little crevices. Wipe away all the excess. You just want an extremely thin layer of, um, and you can use any fat. The only plant-based that I would probably use is coconut oil, just because of its high smoke. Um, yeah, you definitely want something with high smoke. So, as you can see, it's still a bit slick. You want it to be somewhat matte. That's how you'll know you just have a very thin coat. Otherwise, what'll end up happening is when you put it in the oven, it will, um, it'll clump, it'll goop. And you don't want that. And we're going to put on about three or four coats. So I'll continue working with this. Don't forget to do the sides as well as all through the little handles. If you have handles, even if it's like um, a frying pan, just make sure you get every little crook and cranny and crevice. So that's that side done. I know the camera and the lighting in here isn't very good, but I don't know, hopefully you'll get a good impression of that. So the reason why you don't want uh, any sort of um, cloth that you're going to use to have lint, like paper towels, I would never use on this, um, because then the lint will stick to the grease and you don't want that. Okay, so that's looking really good. Now what I want to do is preheat my oven to 500 degrees. So just so that you know, smoke will come up. It'll get very smoky in your house. So make sure you have all the fans on, your windows open, if you have ceiling fans. Otherwise, it'll get very, very smoky in your house while you do this process. So I just took this out of the oven, but this is the first coat uh, seasoned, baked. And that is the other side. So that was just one coat. I'll let this cool down slightly. I'll add another coat. So you'll notice a little bit of goop there. I've got to scrape that off because obviously I missed that and I don't want that. So I'll scoop it off and put another very thin coat on and I'll put it in the oven again. So I'll do this two more times. Third coat, this turned out spectacular. I am super, super pleased with how well that turned out. Really nice. So my husband just came home and he took the smaller one downstairs to the garage. He has um, electric um, sanders. He's going to take the small one um, and use the electric sander to see if he can get the, because it was really caked up on the sides, uh, to see if he can get the bulk of that out. Dom has done a pretty good job of getting rid of a lot of the gook. I have filled this with a blend of half and half vinegar, white distilled vinegar and water, and that seems to have helped. So now that it's um, um, been heated up, I find it's a lot easier to scrape off the rest of that. So I'm just going to keep working at it now using the steel wool brush and to get the rust from the spout, this metal brush. So at this point I've scrubbed as much as I can and now that's vinegar, pure white distilled vinegar. And I'm going to add equal parts of water. And I'm just going to let that sit for about 24 hours.
this is pure vinegar. I ran out of white vinegar last night, so you guys know that I have gallons and gallons of raw apple cider vinegar that I make. I used um, three quarter vinegar to a quarter water solution before I went to bed last night and let it soak. Um, that was around, I guess, maybe 10 o'clock. So I was up around 6.30, came out, poured the water out. It did a pretty good job inside, but it's still really rough and, I, and there's still a bit of rust and I don't want that. So what I did was, this is pure raw apple cider vinegar. I didn't even bother to dilute it. Pretty nasty looking, right? How would you like that for breakfast? Um, made sure that I've, I don't know if you can see, that light on. I filled it right up into the spout because that is all full of rust as well. And this one's going to take a little longer, which I don't mind. You know, again, it's a labor of love. It's it's like a good relationship. It takes time, dedication, and and energy. And I don't mind that with this because I think out of the two, I'd probably use this one more. So really going to take my time with this. Um, <clears throat> I will leave this to soak. The fact that that's as scummy and as scuzzy as it is tells me that it's working. Um, and I'll leave this for, I don't know, until intuitively I just feel like I need to change it and scrub it. Once that's done, then I will um, season it with the pork fat. And when I put these in the oven, I put them in upside down. Um, and I will do that. I still have to work on a little bit of rust here and rust on the bottom. There's still rust on the bottom I need to get off. Uh, but I'm focusing on the inside right now. So that's where that's at. And I will update you when I'm moving forward with this project. Okay, so after three vinegar applications, there is still a lot of rust on this thing. It's really beat up bad. So I'm going to get my husband to take the electric sander once more and do another application and I'll wash it thoroughly with just plain water and yeah then I think I'm going to season it and put it in the oven. Here are the two kettles that are now complete. I've reassembled them and just to show you, they turned out, uh, I'm not sure how well that's going to look in the camera, but they turned out really well. That's the large one. Now what I did mention is you see these little holes where this comes through? You got to make sure you get in with a Q-tip and get that um, greased up as well because if you don't, see what happens? So I might have to take this and um, apply a coat of uh, the same paint that you put on uh, a barbecue. It's um, heat, uh, heat resistant um, so that I can cover that up. Um, by putting the fat in those little holes and once you put this back in, it will prevent that from rusting. Um, this is the small one, so you remember how bad it was, right? It looks amazing. I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm so pleased, even the spout. So yeah, definitely, definitely worth the purchase of $40 for those two, and definitely worth putting in the time and the energy and the effort to restore them back to their uh, beauty, their former beauty, and and um, yeah, very pleased with that. So thanks, Julie Carr, for the prompt, and I hope you all have enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed creating it. Um, this again, you can see it's discoloring. I'm going to have to take the paint and repaint these even here as well, and then these will be up to my standards at least. Um, in a future video, I will show you how to 
do day-to-day -day care of your cast iron so that you won't end up with all that rust that you saw when we first started this and it will essentially help you to maintain the life of this cast iron beyond even your life so until then thanks for watching ciao for now